Hello, I'm the Budget Modeler, and you lucky, lucky people have a second video in three days. But don't get used to it, as I'm off on my honeymoon at the weekend. I may just post some videos from the cruise to Alta in Norway that we're going on. Anywho, this is a paint comparison video between Outlaw Paints and Outclad. If you're watching this, then please subscribe to my channel, give the video a like, leave a comment, and a ring my bell. That'd be brill. Thank you. The model I'm using was kindly supplied by James at Sprubox and the paints came from Jace at Outlaw Paints. For full transparency, yes I was given these items, no I was not told what to say and yes I will be giving an honest assessment of the paints at the end. To begin the video I'll quickly go through the build as the important parts are the paints. So firstly a built model. Quick enough? No. You want more? Oh. What do you look like? Okay, we started with the cockpit and the engine, easy enough. There we go, that's a cockpit and engine built and sprayed black with a light grey dry brush. Next up, the cockpit internals. Now to spray the internal colours. This colour isn't part of the paint test, so let's just crack on. Now to attempt, note that word, attempt the fitting of the cockpit and engine into the model. On the model there were no locating pins that I could find, so I made some styrene tabs to help with the alignment. Whilst they were drying I got on with the wings. There we have the wings done, next we're fitting the cockpit and engine, then close the fuselage up. This is where the engine issues started, as you can see, engine drew to be honest, I was getting that frustrated with it that I decided to build the nose as one part 
and then add the exhausts inside once I've done. Now to build the nose. Now to attach the wings. Let's finish this nose off, shall we? Now for the undercart. And the tail. Now to rattle through mask in the canopy. Now we've finished the bleeding nose, let's get it fitted to the fuselage. We have it ready for priming. As I usually do, I've primed from a Halfords rattle can of black primer. And now for the worms to add some tonal variation. Now to mask the underside in half for the different blues. Right then, now we come to the part you've all turned up for, the spraying. We'll start on the underside with Alclad. Here we're using ALC Triple Two RLM 76 White Blue against Outlaw Plaints RLM Light Blue. FS35352. As you can see, the pigment content of the Outlaw paints is about a third more compared to the Alclad paint. So, Outlaw are off to a really good start here. This is the same for all of the three paints I received from Outlaw. There we go, that's the Alclad done. Now to swap the masking and do Outlaw. As you can see here, I'm using a piece of paper towel to wipe the surface because the Alclad has gone down with a slightly rough surface, so it's drying before it hits. This I found to happen often with Alclad's military colour range, which makes me wonder how is Outlaw going to go down and fare in this country's humidity? Oh, look at that, no bleed. Wow, that went down effortlessly. It just felt better and you could see it go down nicely and no roughness to it. Worked perfectly well. I've not thinned the paints at all, 
though you could get away with probably 75% paint to 25% thinners but be careful I did test the paint against Mr. Thinners, Tamiya Acrylic, um, Tamiya Lacquer Thinners and Normal Enamel Thinners and it works perfectly well with all of them. Look at that, the Outlaw is so much better. So we sprayed and painted the Desert Yellow which was Tamiya then we've masked those areas off. So that is not to be included in the comparison. Now we're going to do Alclad ALCE 220 RLM 74 Grey Green. Now for the Outlaw RLM Dark Green. Look at the difference there, visually it's better and it only took one coat, unlike the Alclad which took two and no cleaning of the nozzle. Now that is a result. Now the last two colours, we've masked off the others. First up we've got Alclad's ALC 221 RLM 75 Violet Grey. Now the Outlaw RLM Grey FS24226. There we have all the paint down. Now for the big reveal. Does any paint get pulled away as we unmask? Who knows? Let's find out, shall we? And there we go, all the masking is off and no paint came away. So, and up for both of them. Now, let's go down to the nitty gritty. Who wins? Outlaw, hands down. Why? One, more pigment. Two, less passes. Three, no tip dry. Four, no blowback on the airbrush required. Five, better coverage. Six, better finish. Would I recommend it? Wholeheartedly. This is an amazing product. I'd even rank it above Tamiya Lacquer. That's how good I think this paint is. I'm even considering changing my Tamiya and Vallejo acrylics over to these. It's brilliant. It's amazing.
Anywho, if you want to examine this model, it will be at Scale Model World. You can pick it up, you can handle it, you can feel the difference. It's going to be on the sprue box stand. Go get some of these paints. If you're in the UK, go see James at the sprue box stand at Scale Model World in Telford. You can find him in Hall 3 or go to his website. Details in the description below for both sprue box and outlaw paints. Anyway, finally, please subscribe to my channel, help it grow, like the video, leave a comment and ring my bell. Remember folks, stay safe, keep on modelling.